Locke felt like, hey, human beings are generally good. Uh, we can trust them to set up their own government, uh, to do it their own social contract, where they have freedoms uh, to set up their own system. Okay, And then we pass laws uh, to restrict our freedoms so that we don't harm others. And that's basically what we put together. Okay. So when we look at these notes here today, we're going to look at five functions of government. Like, what does government do? Okay. So this is still kind of just introducing you to the subject matter here. Okay. Um, and so five basic functions of government. Uh, and the first one is maintaining order, just like we talked about. Guys, we have to give up some of our liberty, some of our freedom. If we had no laws, we would have what? There's a term for that. No government, no laws, anarchy. Okay. Now, I know some people think they like that idea. Uh, but you guys know the symbol for anarchy? Uh, it just comes down like that. Okay. So if you ever see that, that's somebody, you know, an anarchist, okay? Now, have you guys heard of uh, Antifa? Come on. Antifa, the people that, like, all wear all black, and they got helmets on, elbow and knee pads, and they go and they riot and stuff like that in Portland, Oregon. Pay attention to this at all. Like, it's been going on for, like, three years. They call themselves anti-fascists. Okay, but their behavior mimics fascism quite a bit. Okay, because they try and shut people down, you know, by force and so forth. It's it's really kind of funny uh, if it wasn't sad. Um, but anyhow, uh, maintaining order, enforcing laws, uh, safety and security. So whether it's a cop uh, on their beat, a soldier on a tour of duty, and then government also helps with certain things like unfair business practices, discrimination in the workplace. These sorts of things, maintaining order, okay, protecting national industries, all right? So that's, I mean, that's a basic function of government. Providing services. Now, with this, guys, sometimes we have government do things that maybe might not be so easy to do ourselves, like building roads, okay? Um, you could have private industry build roads. You know, like you could get uh, Coke Industries to build roads in Wichita, or you could get Microsoft Corporation that has a lot of money. They could build roads, but then they're going to have to charge you for the roads, using the roads. So we use government to do that. So we pool our money together, our tax money together, and we build roads, okay? And, you know, those early roads, I mean, if you go back to, uh, the East Coast, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the, Pens uh, the Pennsylvania Turnpike, okay? That was actually carved out by, like, George Washington, okay, that turnpike. Uh, when they were moving out into the wilderness, they had to cut through trees and so forth. And basically that path that they used way back with horses turned in is now an interstate highway. It's a turnpike. Okay, I don't know if you've ever heard that, but that's pretty interesting, okay? That's on the East Coast. Now, guys, when we built the railroad out here, uh, and then, you know, we had horses and buggies and Oregon Trail and all these different trails out there. Well, those turned into roads, too, eventually. You know what I mean? Like highway systems. So it's easier to have the government do that sort of thing. When it comes to things like food inspections, now, when you talk about restaurants or meatpacking industry, that sort of thing, guys, we don't really want those industries to regulate themselves because they're looking out for themselves. They're not looking out for the consumer. So to have an independent agency and government come in and, and do that. And, guys, in the newspaper, um, the, the group that goes in and looks at restaurants, like if you go to Dairy Queen, right, and order food, don't you want to know that, like, work area there is clean and they don't have cockroaches and, you know, rats and that stuff around? They're clean, you know what I mean? So you don't get infected, you know, you don't get salmonella, 
and that kind of stuff, okay? So it's important to have that. Now, I can put together an argument here that says, well, you know what? We could privatize building the roads, okay, and maintaining the roads and take that out of the hands of the government, okay? There's this term called privatization. Did you guys know that the government was the entity that used to collect trash? Trash was always collected by the government. Now we have private companies here, right? That's privatizing the, the sanitation system, okay? Now, most of you guys at your house, you get those big barrels, right, that you throw all your trash in, right, and they come by once a week and pick it up. There's actually three or four waste management companies in Wichita. Most people use the one called waste management. Okay, but like in my neighborhood, uh, most of the people have their trash picked up on Wednesday. But there's a few people that didn't like waste management, so they hired a different company to take away the trash. That creates competition. And when you have competition, what happens to the price? Uh, it can come down. Okay, because you've got companies competing for business. They want to give you a better deal so that you have they have more customers. And you want to have good service. Okay, so if, you, if they provide a good service, a good price, you, you buy them instead of going to the government with that. Okay, so that, that's a success story when it comes to privatizing something. What about roads? We can do this with roads. Like, you guys know what potholes are, right? And some of the roads in Wichita are bad, right, in certain places, right? I live out east on uh, Woodlawn and uh, K96, I'm up northeast, okay? And for years, you got these little uh, cracks in the road, right? And it's like every 40 feet. So every time you're driving down Woodlawn, it's just annoying, okay? Well, if we could sell, you know, we have a $30 trillion national debt in the United States. You guys know that? $30 trillion, because this, this is how we get rid of the national debt, okay? We sell the roads to private businesses or individuals, okay? So let's sell Central out here up front, okay? Central from uh, Tyler to 235 where you get on the, uh, on the highway, okay? You can sell that for $5 million, okay? Now, I'm going to buy that. So every time you guys use Central, it's going to be a little barcode on the side of your car. Every time you get on Central, I'm going to charge you two cents. At the end of the month, you're going to pay a bill for the roads that you use. See, everybody pays taxes. Everybody pays for the roads. Some people don't use them. Some people use them a lot. So the people that use the roads pay more. People that don't use the roads don't pay more. You like this idea? Now, if I own Central, Tyler to 235, I want to attract more traffic on mine. So I want to make sure my road's in good shape. I want to attract businesses to my road so that, well, I'll get more people coming on my road. Then I'll make more money. So I maintain it. If you don't maintain your road, then people are going to use maple. So they're going to use 21st or 13th. Does in on this? You can sell all these roads and highways and pay off the national debt. Every penny that goes to every, for every road you sell, that money has to go to pay down the national debt. We, take, we put a big ch chunk in, take a big chunk out. Neighborhoods, those would be owned by the people that live in the neighborhoods. So you guys, you, uh, any of you guys live in a neighborhood where you know where your parents have to pay like uh, uh, homeowner fees, homeowner dues to like mow the grass and the commons area. Some of you might have like a pool in your neighborhood. Do you guys have a pool in your neighborhood? I don't have a pool in my neighborhood. Then you guys live in one of those neighborhoods? 
You live in one of those? The, the, so your parents have to pay like a certain amount a year to help maintain those things, right? We have that in my neighborhood, uh, Whis I'm Whispering Brook, okay? Um, so we have a couple of ponds with fountains. So, you know, you got to pay for that and then they cut, mow the grass, trim the trees, that sort of stuff, okay? Um, I don't know. It's an interesting idea. Um, it would be complicated, but, yeah, I mean, there would just be a, a scanner whenever you turned on a different road. Would you scan your car and charge you like two cents every time you use it? And then, uh, yeah, that would add up over time, but we could cut taxes a little bit because we don't have to pay for roads in. That would be privatizing the, the road system, okay? So that's just, uh, you know, thinking outside of the box, okay? All right, three more uh, functions of government resulting conflict, okay? Um, this is a big one. Like, so the court system is really big here. Okay, so when two people, you and I, have a disagreement, and I'm going to sue you, okay, we use the court system. Now, guys, that's called civil law. Of course, then you have criminal law. Somebody assaults you, okay, the government comes in and resolves that conflict and punishes the person that is the violator. Okay, so you have civil law. You have criminal law, and the court system really helps with that, right? And then promoting values. Basic values are basic principles by which people act and live, okay? Look at uh, safety, willingness to compromise, equality of opportunity, individual rights, and education, okay? One of the values that we promote as a society, as a government, is education. We offer free education, K through 12. Uh, to anybody that shows up at the schoolhouse door. We welcome them in, we take those kids in, and we try and educate them. We want an educated populace. We don't want a bunch of people that don't know how to read and write okay, or function in society. Because a lot of those people will turn to crime. Okay, And that's what we're trying to avoid. We want to have order. Okay, So we got to promote certain values. Give you another example. The government likes to promote marriage and family. So if you're married and you file jointly to get married, you pay your taxes, you pay less than two individuals living together. Not married. Which promotes the idea of value. You have kids. You get a child tax credit. You pay less in taxes. The government is trying to promote family. Okay, and help family. Right, that's one of the things we do here, okay? So government passes laws, sets policies, reinforce. And then the last one, guys, uh, and really, I've, I've had two different, different textbooks since I've been teaching government here. And we used to just have four of these. This came in actually after 9-11, okay? And so they started putting this in the textbook as a fifth uh, uh, or function of government, which is national security. Okay, cyber borders, ports of entry, air missile defense systems, that sort of thing. Okay, so we want to make sure that, uh, you know, people aren't bringing things illegally into, into our country. How are we doing with that? You guys hear about this guy that took hostages in Dallas at the, at the uh, Jewish synagogue last week, last weekend. Did you hear about that? Okay, this guy was from Britain. All right. He had a long rap sheet in Britain, like he was a criminal, and he had ties to terrorist organizations. How the hell did this guy get in the country? How did we not stop this guy from getting in the country? And then he's living on the streets and then buys a gun on the streets and then goes into this Jewish synagogue and holds these people hostage to get this uh, lady, Al-Qaeda, out to try to get her out of prison. Okay? What are we doing? This guy get into our country. All right? So at our borders, you guys know what fentanyl is? You know what oxycodone is? Hydrocodone? You know, pain pills. Guys, the people that make those pain pills illegally will use fentanyl. 
Where's fentanyl produced? Anybody know? Who makes that crap? China makes it. China ships it to Mexico. And then people bring it across the border. They caught a guy two days ago with five pounds of fentanyl on his body. He was carrying it. Five pounds of fentanyl put into pills that could kill thousands of people. You know what the number one killer, did I tell you guys this before the break? The new number one killer of men in this country between 18 and 35 is fentanyl overdoses right now. Guys, ladies, stay away from those pills. Okay? Stay away from those pills. You don't know what's in them. Now, if somebody gets them from a doctor, okay, these pills that are highly addictive, these companies that produce them are just are just lost a major lawsuit. Okay, because these pills are killing so many people with ODs. Right? They're getting people addicted to them, and then when you run out of money, you get these pills, and the doctor won't prescribe you anymore. What is another drug that will give you the same high? as these painkillers. Heroin. Okay, and heroin's a lot cheaper than these pills. So people go to the street and they start buying heroin. Okay. Or they get the, the fake pills on the streets that are laced with fentanyl. Okay. And people are dying every day in this country. It's a, it's a it's an epidemic. Okay. Stay away from those people. Listen, if you ever get prescribed painkillers, painkillers, like you go to the dentist, get your teeth pulled, pulled, right? And you get some hydrocodone for the pain, all right? Listen, you only take those pills unless you have pain. If you don't have pain and you take those pills, your body says, oh, yes, yes, I like this a lot. Give me more of that. And you get addicted like that, okay? This is an epidemic in the suburbs, not in the cities, in the suburbs, okay? It's scary. I had two friends of mine. I haven't told you guys this. Two of my friends that got addicted to painkillers, okay? Thankfully, both of them survived it. But my buddy Mike, he's a parole officer, so like he deals with criminals, right, every day. That's like his life. He deals with, and for a while he was dealing with sex offenders, like convicted sex rapists, child molesters. These were the people he was working with every day, and it's just like, it was really hard on him. And then he hurt his back, and so he went to the doctor, the doctor gave him painkillers, okay? Next thing you know, man, Mike's lost 20 pounds, Mike's lost 30 pounds, Mike's lost 40 pounds, Mike is freaking skinny, he looks awful, okay, he's addicted to these painkillers, okay, and it almost killed him, okay, got another buddy, Ian, that lives in Florida, and I got, I got a text from him, and I ain't seen the guy in 10 years, 15 years, it's like, Charlie, I'm in trouble financially. I need some money. Okay, so I'm like, dude, I told my wife, I'm like, hey, Ian needs some help. I said, all right, dude, we'll wire some money. Wiring some money. Okay. And uh, I get a phone call like two days later from another buddy. He says, hey, don't send Ian any money. He's addicted to painkillers. He's buying them with the money you're sending. And so thankfully, Ian was able to kick that too. But it was uh, it was pretty bad. I mean, it was down in Florida, so I didn't get to see him. But I think it was pretty bad. Uh, I'm just trying to tell you guys, man. It, it only takes one time. It, and I, look, I'm no angel, okay, guys. I was young. I went to college. I partied. I had a good time, okay. I'm not trying to say you can't have a good time, but dude. 
certain things are going to take you down a path you don't want to go, and it will destroy your life. It will destroy your family. Okay, so stay away from that crap. Don't take these pills unless you need them. Okay, all right, I'm done preaching. All right, okay. All right, so five functions of government. All right, so this is, all right, guys, this gets a little more complicated. Not too much, but it's a little more complicated. All right, so sources of authority. So where does the government get its power? We talked a little bit about this yesterday because our government gets its power from who? From the people. We give them their power, okay? Here, monarchies, this is hereditary. They're born into it. Okay, so these are kind of your divine right people, okay? So the monarchy, the head of state, is a king or queen, the leader of the country. So this might be a new term for you, head of state, the figurehead. Okay? So who is the head of state in the United States? Who? Joe Biden. Okay? He's the head of state. Any guys seen him at his press conference yesterday? He gave a two-hour press conference yesterday. They took questions. Two hours. Okay? Very enlightening. We talked about the Ukraine. We talked about the Ukraine. We didn't talk about Okay? Okay, so he's asked about the Ukraine. What if Russia invades the Ukraine? Okay? Some very interesting answers. Though. Like, well, if it's a minor incursion, I, you know, I fully expect that Putin's going to invade Ukraine. Okay. He said, if they do invade, there will be repercussions for them. But he didn't say there would be military repercussions. Okay, so, guys, we could see this happening at any time. I would venture to say by the end of February, maybe March, Russia will be invading the Ukraine. And you know what we're going to do about it? Doesn't look like we're going to do anything. And some people are like, who cares about the Ukraine? You know anybody from the Ukraine? What, who cares about the Ukraine? Now, you guys understand, Ukraine is on the doorstep of Europe. Okay? And some of our closest allies, like Poland, are right next to the Ukraine. And you remember, the Soviet Union controlled Poland for 40 years after the World War II. This is a threat to Europe. Okay, so, guys, it's, uh, it's stuff we should be paying attention to. You're in government class, you're 18, you're 17, you're 18, you should be paying attention to the news. Okay, I'm helping give you information to help you wrap your mind around some of this. If you hear something on the news that you don't understand, bring your butt in here the next day and said, Mr. Ebright, what's going on here? Chances are I'll know the answer. Okay? You guys have Instagram? Of course you have Instagram. Do you follow news on Instagram? Yeah, you just got to follow the right people. Right? You just got to follow news organizations. And then that crap shows up in your feed. Besides the other crap you're looking at. Am I right? Okay. I don't I have Instagram. I don't do Instagram. I'm a Twitter guy. Okay. So I follow all these people on Twitter. Any, any, how many of you guys are on Twitter? Anybody know who this is on Twitter? Do you know? You don't know? He's a good follower. His handle is Cat Turd. Cat Turd. Okay. Yeah, look him up. Okay. Now, he's a right-wing conservative, okay? But he sells merchandise. <laughs> my, my wife bought it for my son for Christmas. He didn't want it, so. I got it. Like, honey, you didn't buy me a cat turd hat? 
But yeah, he's got, I mean, how many followers have you got, Doug? One word, cat turd. Yeah, they, he probably got banned. <laughs> uh, only has no way. Oh, wait, no, yes. 600,000? Okay. No, he is. No, he, he's, uh, his identity is secret. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows who he is. But he's pretty funny. Okay. You won't see a lot of nice things said about President Biden on his Twitter feed, okay? But you can follow him. You can follow other people that, like, talk about what's in the news. Okay? Pretty funny. All right, now, okay, constitutional monarchies, okay? Now, guys, pay attention. This is different, and you're going to need to understand this with a test, okay? Constitutional monarchies, you still have a king, but the real power lies elsewhere in the government, in the Constitution, okay? So the king or queen is ceremonial. They don't have any power. So when we talk about this, we're thinking about England, Great Britain, okay, the United Kingdom. Queen Elizabeth, right? She's like 95, yes? Does she have any real power? No. She's the ceremonial head of state, okay? The real power in Britain lies with the prime minister who runs the day-to-day -day affairs. And you guys know who the prime minister of Great Britain is right now? Boris Johnson, he's got this blonde hair, and it's always really messy, okay? He's a funny-looking dude. Yesterday, in the parliament, Great Britain announced no vaccine passports, no mandatory masking on the island of Great Britain from here on out. They're done. You don't have to prove that you're vaccinated. You don't have to wear a mask at school. You don't have to wear a mask indoors anywhere. You can if you want, but it's over. They're done. How about that? How do you feel about that? You guys like that? Oh, guys, if we get a really bad strain, another really bad strain that comes through that's like killing lots of people, I mean, obviously, Omicron is killing people, okay? But again, it's those comorbidities, the people that have other illnesses. You have obesity, you have uh, diabetes, you have, you know, other issues. Those are the people that generally are dying. And do healthy people die from this? Yes. And it's horrible. It sucks. I mean, it's bad. A lot of kids your age, and I don't know everybody's situation, but a lot of kids your age... Have lost parents to COVID. I mean, it's a sad thing. We can't like just dismiss it, but we also can't live as prisoners to it either. You know what I mean? I think people are coming around to that idea. You know what I mean? It's, it's evolving. So, okay, sorry, I keep getting off track. Okay, back to constitutional monarchies, okay? There are still quite a few of these. So, like Japan, they still have an emperor. But the emperor has no power. We made sure of that after World War II. Okay? We said, okay, listen. We'll let you keep the emperor. But he's only ceremonial. He does not run the country. Okay? In fact, guys, we wrote Japan's new constitution for them in 1945. Okay, so they had, they, you know, and now we're good friends with the Japanese, okay? Norway, Denmark, others, okay? So you guys understand the difference between a true monarchy and a constitutional monarchy? Everybody gets that? The head of state has power, the head of state does not, okay? Yes? Okay. This is what we have, okay? We have a republic, okay? Most countries in the world today are republics, 
of some form. Now, this is where it gets confusing because there's different systems within republics. Okay, So government's authority comes only from the people, not from God. You're not born into a position of power. Okay, It's not hereditary. Okay, And the government is made up of representatives elected by the people. And the fact that we get to elect our representatives makes us democratic. So we don't live in a democracy, but we use democracy. We live in a republic. Our Constitution lays out the rules for this republic. And there's Ben Franklin. Okay, that's that's pretty easy stuff right there. It will get come a little more complicated. Time to get out. 45. We're going to go a little bit longer, and then uh, you guys want to help me. I got a bunch of boxes down at the front office. You guys want to help me carry some of those up? Okay. All right. Let's go to the next slide. We, re we good? We ready? I must go. There you are. Oh, this is the fun part. Okay. Dictatorships. Okay, so we've got monarchies, constitutional monarchies, republics, and dictatorships. But guys, this is the confusing part. When we think of dictatorships, we think of a dictator, like one person, yes? But a dictatorship can be one person or it can be a small group of people. Okay, so in the hands of a single person or a small group, the people have little, if any, control over government. It's dictated from above. In some cases, officials are not elected. They seize power. If they do have elections, those elections are manipulated by the government. I can remember when Saddam Hussein ran for president back in, I think it was like 1994. The ballot said, Saddam Hussein, yes or no? And you marked it no, risking your life. That was the ballot. Okay, that's a dictatorship. Okay. Oh yeah, we had we had elections. We had three elections. Saddam Hussein, yes or no? Okay. So elections would be unfair or manipulated, okay? Let's talk about our elections for a second, okay? Now, we know President Trump felt like there were shenanigans with the election, okay? And there are some people that agree with that, and there are some people that disagree with that. Be that as it may, let's talk about the elections, okay? We have 50 states, so when we have federal elections, for the president and for members of Congress. Each state is responsible for running those elections. We do not have one system for the whole country. There's 50 different laboratories, 50 different systems. For instance, in the state of Kansas, if you want to vote, you have to register to vote. Okay? Once you register, you are registered forever. Until, unless you move, okay, move addresses. So, like, if I move from the east side of Wichita to the west side of Wichita, I need to re-register my new address. If I move out of state, I got to re-register in that new state, okay? But I remain registered as long as I stay in the same spot, okay? When I show up to vote, I have to show a picture ID. To prove that I am the person who is actually voting. Follow me? In many states, you do not have to show an ID. 
you show up and you tell them what your address is. You have to register in every state except for North Dakota. In North Dakota, you don't have to register to vote. You can show up, prove you're a resident with like a, like a phone bill with your address and your name, and you can vote. Okay? But the other 49 states, you have to register. In many states, you don't have to show voter ID. In fact, they used to not have voter ID here in, in Kansas. So when I showed up to vote prior to ID, they'd say, you say, what's your name? I tell them my name, and they ask, what's your address? Okay, and I'd tell them my address, and then they'd let me vote. Okay, how do they know that it's actually me? Because I know my next door neighbor's address, and I know they're registered, but they don't ever go vote. So I just show up, go back a few minutes later, put on some sunglasses, and, you know, show up and say, my name is Phil Newland. What's your address? It's right next door to my house. I know the address. Give me the address and I vote for, as Phil. They don't know. That's called fraud, right? So what's the problem with ID? Well, a lot of people are saying you shouldn't have ID because it oppresses, suppresses the vote. Well, what's worse? Making somebody show an ID or the many people in the country feeling like our elections are, are fraudulent. What's worse? It's not healthy when President Trump says they stole the election. Guys, when Hillary got beat by Trump in 2016, she said the Russians did it. The Russians influenced our election. They did that for three years, and now you have Trump doing it. You know what I mean? This is not good for us. We need to make sure our elections are secure. Okay, but that's up to the states. Follow me. Okay, just giving you a little background on this. This has been in the news a lot lately. Okay, so. All right. Let's stop there, and we'll come back, and I'm going to talk more about dictatorships tomorrow um, and different types of dictatorships.